Right. So, good afternoon, uh, everybody, and welcome to the Horaces India panel discussion on uh, India's uh, technological uh, thrust. Uh, I'm Shrikar Reddy, uh, and I have a very eminent uh, panel here with me: Vijay Tadani, Chairman in IIT; Sandeep Sen, uh, CEO Litmus World; uh, Sundar Kalingam, Professor Srinivas, uh, biotech uh, professor from uh, University of Basel, and uh, Shailendra, chairman of Pushkaraj Group. Uh, the uh, topic, as I said, is India's uh, technological trust. And the background is obviously the, the pandemic which has hit us, and uh, which I think the whole lot of panels have been talking about during the day. Uh, in terms of... Uh, that India has been very successful in uh, in, uh, in 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 industries like uh, 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 information technology, biotechnology, pharmaceutical, uh, education, etc. So, uh, what is now called the new normal? Uh, what does one see uh, the market uh, will look like? Uh, would there be a need for different products and services? They need to be delivered. Is the competition landscape uh, going to change? Are there going to be protectionist uh, pressures and, and so on and so forth? And uh, so I'm going to look at these things today in terms of how does uh, India address this? What skills are needed? What strategies are needed uh, to address what I think uh, each of the panel believes is the new moment look like? And... Uh, and then we'll look at some implementation uh, challenges. Uh, so my request for all panelists is while, uh, while each of us are not talking to go into a, a mute mode so that we don't have a, uh, we don't have a uh, 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 feedback and uh, echo and so on and so forth. So I see Vijay has gone away. So, so the format we have is that we'll have uh, each of the panelists talk about their respective uh, 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 areas of expertise. So I'll I, I'll start with uh, Shele, uh, uh, Vijay. Uh, you know, Vijay. Uh, you know, from the how do you look at this from the point of uh, education, Vijay? Okay, uh, uh, Shrika, Thanks for the opportunity um, uh, to be uh, with this uh, steam panel. Wish we had all met in uh, person, but I'm sure that's going to happen soon, or maybe that itself is a new normal. Uh, 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 your mention of uh, the technological thrust and the technological supremacy itself uh, that India has now developed is itself a great compliment to the Indian education and skill space. Uh, I just I, I just thought I'll mention a very few points and then we can, of course, open it for discussions. Uh, the first is education and skills is a force multiplier. Uh, when I say a force multiplier, not only can it improve the quality of uh, life of uh, Indians, but also how Indians contribute uh, to, uh, you know, the rest of the industry and the rest of the world. And to that extent, it's very significant. And I'm, I'm very happy that you decided to take that on first. The, <clears throat> let me just spend one or two minutes on each of uh, the two spaces that you said, education and skills, because to me, they are two different things. I come from that industry. When I refer to education, I'm referring to formal education. And I think the new normal, which is emerging, contrary to the public thought, the popular thought is not exactly digital. And that's where I would like to say uh, people are uh, widely believing that the digital instruction is the way out. In my opinion, it is uh, the, the answer lies in blended, which is largely digital, but a very, very important element of, of, uh, of human interaction or face-to-face -face interaction, which is required. The second thing which I want to say is that uh, last two or three centuries, education has been trying to reform itself, but has not succeeded. And digital technologies had a great opportunity. Uh, but then there were some early adopters, large number of naysayers, and a large, an even larger number of uh, fence-hitters. I think the great opportunity this new normal has thrown is that these, all the fence-hitters and, and naysayers have now become believers. Why? Because we were forced to it. Uh, 
Having said that, while that is a positive thing, the negative or the thing which we need to worry about is education is not about having to see your professor's face and uh, hear him talking on video. Education is beyond even the classroom space we all know. And to that extent, uh, how do you deploy technology to deliver a complete education uh, uh, experience, educational experience? How do you develop the pedagogy for to make sure that the learning effectiveness is the highest? And how do you make sure that thing that we have been struggling with now for at least three, four decades that we have been using this word outcomes, learning outcomes? How can we do that is a challenge which is not only facing the country, but facing the society at large. We all know that while all of us have switched to digital education, uh, children are not without saying so, and sometimes they say so, are hating it. They are hating it in the form in which it is getting delivered. So there is lots to be done. And learner centricity, learner centricity, I think, is the key learning that has come. And remember, the turf has moved from the old experienced teacher who used to have the control on the class to, in this case, a learner who is a much more discerning user of digital technologies. So uh, this is the new normal. Uh, in skills, and therefore there are many things which you can do, most important in this is how does our faculty adapt to this new correct uh, issues. But I, I, I'm coming to the opportunity in a minute. In the skills, the new normal is uh, actually much more, uh, much more impactful. Why? Because we were earlier discussing future of work, which was digital disruption caused in the industry. But now we are discussing future of workplace as well, which means what was constant was the, that office and that place where you used to go together, even that is getting challenged. And therefore, I think uh, a whole lot of new challenges are coming up. And what I find is that it is going to require just about everybody to train. And therefore, I call this the largest skills migration, which will take place in the history of humankind. And hopefully, these things can't be done many, many times over. So it's a great opportunity. One more time, it's a great opportunity. There is an opportunity to upskill, which means improve your skills, reskill, move to modern technologies, and reinvent. Unlearn some of the things that you had and learn something new. I think these are uh, some very important things. And in the training industry, the word which we use is the learning curve of the organization in this transition will define the earning curve. So the learning Thank curve you. will be the new earning curve. I think that is a lesson which has to be taken. There are multiple components of the, how that can be done. The so, India so, is a very, very strong market, which is coming, which is as far as startups are concerned. And I think startups will benefit a lot. It's visible from funding. But there are a large number of established players. And the global education space, which is nearly six and a half trillion dollars, I think India has a great opportunity to play in because of its factor advantages of the largest education laboratory, the the largest, uh, uh, the, lo the low cost uh, delivery that we can do, the largest engineering population we have, and the largest number of teachers that we can perhaps offer. I can talk more as we go along, but I think these are some great opportunities for the education and skills. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. A lot of uh, interesting points for us to dig deeper into for later on. So I'll move on to you, Srinivas, to uh, you know, give a same perspective or a different perspective from a completely different industry, uh, pharma and uh, biotech. Thank you, Srikar. Uh, thank you very much for the kind introduction. And I would like to share my perspectives on pharma and the healthcare industry in reference to COVID-19. As you see, um, the global crisis have come to the healthcare system as well. And not only in the local markets, but also in the global markets, the healthcare system has been significantly uh, disturbed. Um, particularly talking about the Indian pharmaceutical industry, Indian pharma industry stands among top 10 largest manufacturers. 
uh, in order to uh, satisfy the global needs. And by volume, it corresponds to about 10% of the generic drugs. And particularly in terms of the vaccines, we produce about 60% of the global needs. On the other hand, India, Indian pharmaceutical industry largely depends on the China for procurement of the raw materials, key ingredients, drug intermediary molecules, bulk drugs, and thus this corresponds to 70%. And having said that, this would clearly indicate the pathological situation of the Indian pharmaceutical industry. And imagine not only due to the pandemic situation, but also because of the neighboring uh, uh, situations with the neighboring without friends. If something happens, um, our Indian pharmaceutical industry gets finished not only in the global markets, but also in the local markets. So within this context, from the national health security point of view, the following actions needs to be taken. Indian government as well as the key representatives of the pharmaceutical industry should understand the situation and align on different scenarios. And second point, um, the Indian government should now take more short actions without having any regular portfolio criteria. The third point is that um, Indian government together with the key representatives of the industry they would have to identify the markers and the trigger points in order to draft the effective policies and strategies to overcome or to mitigate the evolving crisis. And particularly speaking, the government can revive and revitalize the public drug makers in order to ramp up the raw materials, key integrated particularly talking the key ingredients of the drug manufacturing. Alternatively, what they can do is they can enable the, the local or domestic ecosystem to ramp up the production of the APIs or raw materials, again, key ingredients, by removing the financial and technical barriers. So thank you again, and I would be very happy to get into the more detailed discussion. Thank you, Srinivas. Uh, Shailendra, I'll move on to you uh, to give a perspective from the industry and manufacturing sector. How do you look at this? Uh, Shailendra, unmute yourself. Thank you, Shrikar, and thank you, Frank, uh, from Horasis, uh, for giving us this opportunity. It has become a ritual for us. Every year in the month of June, uh, we get together. Uh, for the first time, we have been meeting digitally, and this is a very, very good experience. Uh, it saves a lot of money, time, and uh, logistics. Well, uh, the topic, uh, India's uh, technology thrust uh, is very apt in the present situation. And in order to get into that particular topic, uh, the kind of the challenges and the opportunities which have been thrown at us, I would like to take stock of last two decades. Uh, in last two decades, India... Uh, uh, has always been in the forefront uh, of uh, technology and uh, providing products and services uh, to the domestic as well as global markets. Now, if we uh, look at the products, uh, uh, the products could be engineering products, maybe diesel engines or automotive or the pumps or the compressors, uh, um, uh, whatever the, uh, you can think of. Uh, we have been having large manufacturing setups uh, in India and uh, we have been manufacturing these products either fully indigenously uh, of uh, indigenous makes, uh, 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 to name a few, we know them. And otherwise, uh, we have been doing it uh, in a collaboration with certain overseas principles. And uh, the uh, kind of effectivity we have gained out of this manufacturing on products uh, has gone to such an extent that uh, when we are doing this uh, manufacturing in collaboration with the overseas principles, we have started manufacturing products for the global production. Now, if I take an example of a diesel engine manufacturer, he's been manufacturing eight models of engines for the entire world production. That, that, that really shows uh, how we uh, 
uh, are progressing as far as uh, manufacturing is concerned or uh, we have been producing good quality material and cost effective products and this has been the trend uh, for many other products to which we were having it uh, uh, in our portfolio and uh, i have narrated a couple of them but then the list uh, goes on and on and on in services uh, yes certainly it happens to be one of the biggest uh, of the contributors as far as india is concerned we are virtually controlling almost 55% of the global market share and uh, we know the prowess uh, that we have attained as far as it is concerned one need not get into that and then these uh, uh, sectors have contributed a lot uh, in terms of uh, revenue and in the gdp of uh, the country so much so that we achieved almost 7 7 and 1/2% uh, and then we slid it down because of the slowdown that we had it year previous to pandemic now after having hit by this particular pandemic which is highly unprecedented there have been uh, thev- several challenges and um, naturally when there are challenges there are going to be opportunities also so because every challenge thrown at uh, a wise person looks at a couple of other opportunities so well, like we say one door closes 10 doors open and the uh, the intelligence lies in understanding which are those 10 doors rather than creeping about one door which has been closed on you and the opportunities are going to be plenty as far as uh, manufacturing are, uh, is concerned but then going into opportunities i would like to look at the challenges the vulnerabilities and the focus that we are required to have it as far as manufacturing is concerned the biggest challenge is the restoration of operations whether it be workforce whether it be liquidity whether it is the supply chain management logistics or whether it is a demand management which is the most uh, crucial of all because uh, we have been seeing a degrowth of almost 20% in last 18 months uh, prior to pandemic and now with this pandemic 3 months eaten up already uh, we are going to experience another year which is going to have a degrowth of 15 to 20% so in a span of 30 months we are going to hit at almost 40 to 50% degrowth and that is not a very good uh, figure to look at but then we as indians are quite innovative and we understand these things very well because in everything that we do we struggle uh, we have been used to um, having struggles and then overcoming those struggles and then achieving the results that uh, we have been aiming at so i am not very much worried about these uh, challenges which have been thrown at us but then certainly there are uh, focuses uh, which are required uh, for us that we have been uh, conventionally an inward looking society we get very happy with uh, the domestic uh, demands and then we need to change our focus we need to be a global player we need to be an outwardly looking so- uh, society we need to create uh, certain good manufacturing platforms a modular uh, manufacturing or an industry 4.0 that has been talked about where we have a cyber physical setup of machines talking to machines with the help of uh, it ai and iot the sort of inputs as such the process innovation naturally will take place because of the um, thrust of the technology within the manufacturing in india as such and these focuses will certainly give us uh, an opportunity to put ourselves as a manufacturing hub um uh, in the global platform the opportunities which are thrown at us right now is the relocation of various uh, manufacturing setups coming from china to uh, places like india and india stands out in that because india is basically a country uh, full of engineers full of uh, talent which can do designs development and uh, it is certainly a democratic and ip pr- protection is very much guaranteed here so everyone looks at india Uh, as a potential manufacturing hub so i look that as a one of the biggest opportunities for all our msmes who could uh, really set up some kind of a collaboration or a joint venture government is very very proactive in helping uh, the msmes uh, the recent package has been announced where agriculture and msmes were the thrust and then msmes should take advantage of that so when government and industry work together uh miracles can happen so i'm not very much worried about the way things have happened during this pandemic but then the future is quite good and we certainly see very many good opportunities opening out uh, for manufacturing e-commerce uh, agriculture food processing then um, uh, healthcare uh, medical uh, equipments and things like that i think uh, with that introduction i would like to leave the floor open uh, we could discuss uh, further as we go along thank you Thank you, Shailendra, for those interesting comments. So I'll uh, move on to Sundar uh, in terms of uh, how do you see it in the whole uh, digital technology uh, landscape? 
Thank you, Shrikar. Thank you, Horaces. And uh, uh, hello to all the panel members who have been in the past. Uh, so I am going to broadly talk about just four points at the moment um, about the whole technology digital landscape. The first one, I think, is uh, while everybody now feels, oh, wow, it's a great it's a boom time for technology. Everybody's stuck at home, so now it's time to, for technology to come to the rescue, which is certainly true. But if you talk about the technology industry per se over the next year or so, the short term, I would say, uh, there are indications that we are not going to grow. We're going to, in fact, fall. Gartner says about 8% fall globally and similar numbers for India. So um, that's point number one. It's not as rosy overall as it uh, it might seem from the outside. So that is the first point I would like to leave you with. Second point is, I think, the positive point, and which is what everybody is talking about, is because of this, uh, this uh, pandemic and as people are calling this a new normal, there has been a fundamental shift in the way people are doing things. Many uh, actions which you earlier didn't do earlier, you're now doing. Many people have been forced into digital. Vijay talked about how this is a great opportunity for scaling everybody. And uh, b broadly, because uh, when you are put in, with your back against the wall, you have to come in, you know, uh, what I call, uh, come out fighting. So, which is why I, this is a great opportunity for, if you take a slightly longer term, not the short term, you alone, for, the entire digital transformation of not just India, but the globe in general for uh, all the things that can happen. So this is um, a good time for the industry in general, if we do a good job with, uh, as far as you know, taking this uh, forward. The third point I would like to talk about is, so what are the key points that which are, um, you know, which, which we are seeing? So one, of course, is automation. You know, I mean, you want to have less physical contact, face-to-face -face contact. So what can we do? What can the industry do? to help automation across various fields, across various other industries, across its own industry, et cetera. That's one important aspect. Second aspect is that of, of course, uh, if you're going to move people to work from home, uh, particularly the technology industries and things of that sort. So other things come up earlier. You didn't worry so much about home security, but then security now becomes very important. Ability to work from, you know, areas of that, those areas become that much more important. So there are various strands which suddenly take a huge degree of importance. I'm not saying they're not important earlier, but uh, now the relative importance of some areas is changed as compared to other areas. So the, um, the new normal is genuinely, at least the technology industry, a new normal because some things have become more important and some things have become less important. So that is the, my third point to you. And finally, I think this is a great time. And while it's not necessarily specific to the technology industry, because when rules change is the time for innovation. Innovation happens when you have the opportunity to do things uh, if there is no, not much change in the social, cultural structure of any, let's say, the world or, or any place, the scope for change is low. When disruption happens, scope for change increases inf uh, infinitely. And because of that, uh, and the technology industry is, I think, right now in the forefront of that because it's got the ability to do the most, uh, do the maximum innovation. In fact, the minimum work in terms of innovation is concerned for maximum impact. May not be so much true with some other industries. In that sense. So this, to my mind, the fourth point I'd like to leave you with. Uh, and then uh, as we move forward, we will, I think, talk more about uh, this and other things as well. Thank you, Shikhar. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Sundar, for uh, some very uh, insightful thoughts on the tech industry. So uh, last but not least, move on to uh, Sandeep. Uh, I think uh, both from the, both involved with the startup industry and the BPO world. So how do you uh, look at this, uh, Sandeep? Sure. Uh, Shrikar, uh, first of all, am I audible? Yes. You are. Okay, great. So I think, uh, you know, the BPO industry has been really going through a huge change uh, post-COVID. Uh, the first and the most important, and we are all reading about this, is the work from home. And that will become, to a large case, the new normal. There will be some BPOs that will be entirely work from home, whereas others, the proportion of work from home will increase. Now, that has three or four very key things. One of the big things in the BPO was the cost of both in physical infrastructure and technical infrastructure. I used to joke by saying, are we in the real estate business? Because we had four to five million square feet. Now that changes. Second, come to technological infrastructure. We used to use heavy duty CapEx for Avaya, Cisco, for voice telephony, non-voice telephony. Now you can move a lot of business applications to the cloud. And therefore, you are trying to save a lot of those CapEx, number one. And secondly, you pay by the drink. As your business grows, you start paying. So for people who are getting into the industry or people who are established players, this is a time to pivot to these changes that we are seeing. On the manpower side, particularly in India, this has another great implication because earlier you were stuck to the metros, the mini metros and some key tier two cities. 
and there was a demand and supply challenge because in these big cities bangalore for example now if you are going to do from home you have the ability to look at resources across the country and therefore that eases the demand and supply gap a lot there are challenges a uh, government and regulations which i'll come later but this is a huge paradigm shift coming back to the bpo companies themselves look the good ones the smart ones have understood they were already trying to do automation but now they're saying that look even the clients will welcome automation the use of ai chat bots intelligent bots etc what it does digitization uh, what it does is three things one obviously reduces costs and today's post covid scenario clients are saying look what can we do to reduce costs that's number one number two it actually increases process efficiency because with these intelligent things you can do real time analytics in the past we have done a lot of mis which is descriptive but now we're looking at real time and we're trying to look at what is the future which is either predictive or prescriptive doing that properly you can actually transform processes and third is scalability with automation you can scale much faster let me give you a real life example the government of india said that banks will give a moratorium to customers to pay back loans for a few months the ones who had a high degree of automation were able to scale up much more than those which were searching helter skelter for manpower to call up customers to inform them to ask them so that scalability also was possible so costs scalability efficiency and process reorganization i think this is a fantastic time for bpos to get the bull by the horn and transform the business to make a uber like model if bpos don't transform it somebody else will i want to go quickly to startups and i know time is short and therefore i'm just going to speak one or two things we can come to later on startups today have a unique opportunity to pivot towards what are the solutions in the post covid world and i'll give three of them that i am involved in in some way or the other there is a company which is trying to do contactless ordering contactless menu because once you go to a restaurant today you want to ensure it's safe so there's a company called my menu has done a large number of applications doing well there's a company called unifor which says look we will automate a lot of the bpo processes not just the back end which we've been automating for years but even the voice process there's a company called litmus world which used to do real time which does real time customer conversations for npa csat it says i will get into the entire field of digital research which ac nielsen others have done because now going from house to house and doing that research is difficult not feasible etc so can you pivot into new solutions there are lots of others on the healthcare on the other side but i'm just sticking to the solutions on the saas platforms and the final point i will make which is great for uh, should i say startups and also for bpos earlier when you want to do business development across the world it was very expensive travel there have great sales teams how are you doing business development now a lot of it is now being done digitally you have uh, demos you have virtual solutions you have virtual case studies and a lot of that is working i can see that with top companies that again reduces the cost makes it possible for startups bpos etc to go global much faster much cheaper much easier so therefore there is definitely a paradigm shift and those who catch it at the flood those who will do differentiated will be the one which will get the best results trigger right so so th- yeah thank you all uh, everybody i think some very interesting opening remarks uh, i think overall the the theme is that while obviously in the short term this is a bit of a a bit of a dampener uh, i think everybody here believe that uh, the long term uh, brings a lot of opportunity if uh, companies are innovative enough and and do a lot of a uh, lot of things uh, the right way so let me segue into the next section and uh, you know ask uh, each of you uh, you, you know in your respective uh, sectors so if you have to just pick one one area uh, we want to f- that you would uh, you would want somebody to focus on and uh, and why and how right so so, so like one and a half minutes from each of you uh, so i'll start with uh, i'll start with uh, sandeep so one area out of all this which we have to pick uh, 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 to get ready with and and why and how okay so there are many areas and there is not necessarily an order of importance but i will start with this work at home and the logic goes beyond bpo 
if today google employs working in buffalo because he can't come to office and can't come to mountain view he might as well work from bangalore and therefore that makes india far greater ability to do the back office or the office of the world now there are some challenges which i was bring out dot department of telecom is a very archaic body and the first challenge is that department of telecom has broken into into multiple telecom circles which are further broken into what is called ssa secondary switching areas you have to pay a bank guarantee of a crore for every area and so on and so forth the government had done some relaxation till 31st july i am saying throw out all these india for god sake is one country let people entrepreneur emerges flourish and therefore get all these regulations out number one. number two the other thing which is important and which is related is that work at home will be successful that the issues really are of data security right security and data concerns how can we work you know for example we are telling clients that look we can do we are doing gdpr we are doing others you've got to give that assurance to clients a that you are following norms that your country follows ip practices and norms regularly and gives them that assurance of data security data privacy if we can manage both give clients that assurance that the data is safe b transparency somebody is working from home how do i know how great he is working because as long as he is working in an office but today there is technology there is cameras there is real time to tell that so you you asked me to pick one i could have spoken i could have spoken a lot on ai that we are doing but i thought i will take this work from home because it really changes the paradigm india today is not limited to 10 cities or 20 cities india can be limited to can grow to 500 cities where you have the right ability the right manpower to work from home and it can truly become the office of the world provided companies are smart enough the government removes archaic regulations and we un- all right oh he's gone okay All right, so I, I think I'll uh, switch the question to you, Sundar. Same question. If out of all this, we have you, you say that we have to do one thing, why and how kind of stuff. Yeah, you have to unmute Sundar. Yeah, thanks, Shikhar. Yeah, so I'm gonna say Sandeep pulled out the what I call I'd say the the sort of obvious answer or the the, the big answer. Work from home, obviously, at least from a from technology perspective. I think there is the I think it's a good industry in the sense that there is an opportunity for people to work from. I mean, you can manage that, which may not be possible, let's say, in the manufacturing industry or 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 any other sort of you know supply chain or that sort of a thing. So um, within this whole um, area of let's say work from home, and again, um, uh, what there are two key aspects, and one here uh, referred to, which is the whole point of security. When you're talking about customers and clients, they're worried about okay, I can send you and let you do work from home. your your employees work from home but what what is the security uh, involved and how do you ensure that my data is not uh, what i call under risk so uh, the other area is that of what i call monitoring and measurement now i don't yet think in the what i call it the technology industry we have a good enough system of and i'm talking about right across and the other panelists may choose to disagree that a good enough system of actually monitoring the what i call the quality or the quantity of work that is done by what i call our employees so and there are many tools that have tried and all not that it's not works not happening this front but i think this is an important area i'm sure many big companies and we are all looking at this area to ensure that you know the ability to monitor the work that people are doing i'm not saying from big brother attitude but from the fact that there are certain deliverables can this be done i think that will be that will be very useful specifically for this industry thank you Thank you, Sundar. So I'll move to Shailendra. Uh, so, what is if you have to do, do just one thing? What is that, Shailendra, and why? Yeah, <laughs> the entire world is looking at India uh, to become uh, the uh, biggest of the manufacturing hub uh, for uh, the entire world, and we have to grab this opportunity with both the hands. And what it means actually is uh, giving out the best quality product at the best cost and uh, meeting the delivery or the volumes. Uh, those are required to be done. and if we uh, look at it uh, as far as the cost is concerned we have already addressed that uh, cost part of it we have been one of the most cost effective countries but then there is always a scope to do better and that can happen by process innovation by doing automation like uh, my other colleagues have said it and uh, reducing uh, the cost by sheer number of volumes Uh, or a uh, number of uh, items uh, you produce per day or something like that or the scalability part of it so we have to improve on scalability to get the cost uh, advantage 
uh, the scalability will improve the moment uh, we get into process automation or apply the principles of IT, IoT on uh, manufacturing. And uh, naturally, quality is uh, built into the uh, manufacturing. It is not inspected into, like we always say in manufacturing. So the quality is uh, uh, built into the system. So that should not be a problem. The biggest advantage the India offers uh, beyond uh, these things are, would be available with any country. But what India offers is the workforce or the manpower. We have a very, very talented manpower available with us. Almost 700 uh, thousand engineers every year are rolled out of various colleges with uh, a marginal amount of training given to them. All those engineers can be absorbed into all kinds of products and services industry. And therefore, everyone in the world acknowledges this particular fact that, yes, India has a young population. India has an intelligent population. India has capabilities of design and development. Therefore, it can become the future uh, manufacturing hub as far as the entire world is concerned. All right. Okay. Thank you, uh, Shailendra. So, to uh, Professor, uh, so what? What if you have to do just one thing? Uh, what would that be, and why? Yeah. You have to unmute yourself, Srinivas. Naturally, it has to be healthcare system, and it is a great opportunity for India now to release, particularly the dependence, the large dependence on the China. We have to do that. The government needs to have a very serious and strict paradigm shift and policies in order to bring the fast track system to enable the ecosystem to manufacture the key and raw and important ingredient materials for the drug manufacturing and become as a viable alternative for the rest of the world. And this is a great opportunity. Thank you, Srinivas. So over to you, Vijay. I mean, if you have to do one thing in the field of education, what is that and why? Uh, one thing and one word, agility. Uh, <laughs> we, need, we, we need agility and I'll give you a reason, the only one reason. While we are talking, uh, the uh, 35 crore or children who are going to school and college will be one day older and will be living with the same system would have lived with the same system and grown with the same system because we are still thinking. Uh, what is that agility equal to? I think this is scope for great innovation and I, uh, some of our other esteemed panelists talked about that. Uh, that innovation both has to, be, uh, has to be visible in every action that we take. And that part of our business which is regulated, for example, government regulated, Government needs to open the doors and permit a free imports, a free market, which means at this point of time, nobody can sit in judgment of who can or who should or who should not. Let a hundred, in our case, a million flowers bloom. Okay, I, I think is one issue of innovation. The second is even in the organizations, people may be still thinking, should I, should I not, what, make, what things will happen, what things will differentiate. I think we will lose time. We need to move. We don't have to be perfect in everything that we do. We should we should move with what we have and keep improving over time. And for improving over time, collaboration. It's important for us, the organizations across the board, whether it is industry and academia, academia and academia, academia and government, just about every connection that you can think of, we should use the power of network uh, to, to be agile and come up with a very, very superior solution, which the world expects from us. Thank you, Vijay. So, so I guess my last question, because I think we're running out of time, because everybody's about a minute kind of stuff, is really, I don't want to poke cold water, but I think one keeps hearing about a lot about protectionism, inward looking, thinking. This is also leading to changing of behaviors worldwide and how many other things. So my question to each of the panelists is, if you see what is, I mean, one, I mean, uh, there could be many, but uh, what according to you is this one single challenge or threat you, you see and what should we do about it? I'll start with uh, you, uh, Sundar. You are unmute, unmute. Unmute, unmute. I'm sorry. I think one thing you have to do is to unmute yourself. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then mute back. <laughs> but yeah, no, I will say I'm not going to talk about the government system or two because that's, uh, I think we're all um, cognizant of the issues there. 
but I think one challenge, and we keep talking about it both an, as an opportunity also, because the sheer size and the scale of the country as a, as a whole. I mean, we talk about the fact that we have uh, such a large middle class, so many minds, and uh, some somebody mentioned so many students coming out of uh, you know colleges. Which I talked about thirty five crore children um, uh, losing a day if you don't uh, if you're not agile enough. Uh, the the challenge is the scale. One of the always the biggest challenge in India is always scale in terms of the sheer size of anything that we do. How are we going to ensure that you know um, we are able to meet this for the larger group of people, not divide into various what I call sections in a sense, somebody gets more benefit than the others, all that sort of thing. So the, the scale problem, I would say, I think it's a bit large, what I call thought as such, is, is, is the one which will require, you talk about a challenge in what I call, what uh, we will get out of this when we go forward and let's across this, this crisis, um, will still remain with us. And that's something we should keep in mind um, um, for, for any of the solutions that we, that we have going forward. All right. Thank you. So same question to you, uh, Srinivas. So what do you see as a challenge or a threat and how should we address it? The major challenge and threat for us, particularly from the healthcare point of view, is that if you cannot now identify the real trigger and market points, what is going to happen is the healthcare system is going to collapse. Particularly in the COVID situation, many of the uh, private as well as public sectors are not able to effectively respond to the required um, um, needs and uh, now this is the time for the government as well as the private sectors to coordinate and align and uh, um, and different scenarios and come up with the effective and um, uh, effective strategies and policies not only from the drug manufacturing point of view but also from the digital health point of view Thank you, uh, Srinivas. So, Vijay, what's your take on this? I think the single largest challenge we have is uh, the absence of a change mindset. Uh, we have a lot of questions on just about any time any change comes up. And I think uh, we, we hold the, our democracy against ourselves. Instead of permitting ourselves to be able to change fast, and building a positive mindset and a mindset of saying we will somehow do it. Uh, I think many times we are we are we are in the in the in the change management scenario in the denial phase for most of the time. I think if that challenge can be overcome, and that is again from policymakers to to regulate uh, to regulators to industry to academia to to just about name everybody. Uh, I think if we can, if we can, if we can focus less time on arguments and focus more time on action, I think we would benefit a lot. And permit entrepreneurship, permit uh, people to uh, to to succeed. All right, thank you, Vijay. So, yeah, uh, Sandeep, uh, what would uh, you you take as as the uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, sure. I'm putting a different challenge, and that is because the outsourcing industry depends on business from the rest of the world, particularly the U.S. Now, if you look at the employment numbers, this is the worst unemployment in the U.S. since the Great Depression. So there is bound to be a lot of issues on protectionism. There is bound to be, uh, you know, people saying that, look, yes, work from home is fine, but it has to be work in the continental United States. So that, to me, is a bit of a worry. While Companies here can be well poised to take advantage, but the whole issue of protectionism and jobs, to my mind, is a challenge that we have to worry about. All right. Thank you. So over to you, Shailendra, uh, yeah. before the wind up, I think. Yeah. Like, Manufacturing oh. has uh, two uh, uh, distinct uh, product portfolios. Uh, India, as such, uh, we are very good on high-tech, low-volume uh, products uh, and services where uh, we can easily compete with anybody. The, pro the challenge is where there is a low tech and high volume. That is where we falter. And that is where we cannot compete with uh, the other Asian countries everyone knows about. And the, uh, the skill lies in India preparing for the low tech, high volume kind of uh, manufacturing, which will require tremendous amount of uh, upgradation of uh, technology, uh, upgradation of skills uh, for the operators, uh, training, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I, I, I think uh, we should be aiming at low tech, high volume um, products uh, uh, in the coming future. 
Great. So, right. Thank you. I think the clock is running me down. It says 30 seconds left. So, I'll quickly sum up. So, so thank you all. It was great to have you as a panel. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. And I hope our viewers did as much uh, as we all, all did. Had some great insights. I wish there was more time. I think there are a lot more things left to say. But at least I believe uh, we managed our time well. Got a lot of, uh, I, I got a lot of insight. Uh, so, thank you all very much. Uh, Take care, stay safe, uh, and be well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you Thank all. You. Thank you so much.